From a 30-minute pilot to a full show with a star-studded cast, the Has-Been Hotel hype is back after five long years. Not everything is the same, though. Here are the biggest changes between the pilot and the official show. The first thing fans of the Has-Been Hotel pilot will probably notice when watching the Prime Video series is that the animation style is a bit different. Of course, that's to be expected. The pilot was created solely through Vivian Medrano's own independent studio, Spindlehorse Toons, while the Amazon series is a collaboration between Spindlehorse, A24, and Bento Box Entertainment, the latter being the production company behind Bob's Burgers. If you haven't seen the pilot in a while, the differences might not be too apparent. The character designs, Medrano's calling card in many ways, are mostly the same and still spectacular. But if you watch the two versions side by side, you'll instantly see some differences in style. Medrano's pilot was a more clear homage to older styles, blending gory and depraved subject matter with absurdist animations more akin to old Looney Tunes skits. The pilot also pulls heavily from the late 1990s and early 2000s, and Invader Zim in particular, which Medrano has cited as one of her biggest animation inspirations. It's a lot of hard edges and Dutch angles, creating a visual vibe that's as claustrophobic as it is colorful. The Prime Video series is, put simply, a bit less extravagant and extreme in its visuals. That may be due to budget realities of a longer-term project, or the changes in production, or both. In the musical numbers, you can still see the dramatic style shifts and occasional silhouette animation moments that filled the pilot, but they aren't as prevalent elsewhere. The Prime Video series still looks great, though, and it didn't lose what made the pilot feel unique. Just as the animation has become a bit less severe in the transition from pilot to series, the characters also evolved into more grounded versions of their original selves. In the pilot, Charlie comes across as the only person in hell who's operating under normal human emotions. Angel is portrayed as a hyperactive crook who loves violence just as much as he loves drugs and sex. Husk and Nifty only appear briefly, and even Vaggy feels much more aggressive and less balanced in the pilot than she is in the full show. Most of these differences can be viewed as instances of character development, rather than actual changes. In the Amazon Prime show, Angel takes a while before he starts to lower his mask and get vulnerable with people. But even at their most ridiculous, the newer versions of the characters feel more grounded and less, well, cartoonish. They all show a wider range of emotions from the start, creating a more accessible ensemble for a full show. Arguably, the biggest character change, though, belongs to Alistair the Radio Demon. He appears at the end of the pilot as a kind of psychotic, eldritch nightmare, hiding his true nature behind a veneer of old-timey charm. Dear, if I wanted to hurt anyone here, I would have done so already. There's still his deal in the full series, but he's notably less terrifying. His vocal filter is toned down, his character design is a bit softer, and he actually seems to believe in Charlie's mission. He makes fun of it constantly, sure, but he's not nearly as malicious as he is in the pilot. And fortunately, if you've become accustomed to Has-Been Hotel's original voice actors, you won't find any of them in the new show. Every main character has been recast, many with big-name actors. For better or worse, that's often the way of things when big studios get involved. Charlie, who was voiced by Jill Harris in the pilot, is played in the Amazon series by Broadway star Erica Henningsen. The original Vaggy actor Monica Franco has been replaced by Brooklyn Nine-Nine star Stephanie Beatriz. Alistair's Edward Bosco was replaced with Amir Talai, and Angel Dust's original voice actor Michael Kovac has been swapped out for Blake Roman. Nifty, Serpentius, and Husk have also gotten new voices, with Kamiko Glenn replacing Michelle Marie. Alex Brightman replacing Will Stamper, and voice acting legend Keith David replacing Mike Laura. The new cast is great, and they have a lot of big deal voice acting credits between them. Still, it's hard not to miss the original stars of the pilot when watching the first episode of the Prime Video series. Soon, the new actors will become the voices fans hear in their heads when they picture the different characters, but we'll always have the originators to appreciate as well. When you have a full 8-episode season to tell your story, things don't have to be as rushed as they might be in a 30-minute short. That might be why the pacing of Prime Video's Has Been Hotel feels so much more relaxed than the pilot. However, there also seems to be an intentional style change, dropping some of the original's frenetic editing and subbing in a more conventional narrative structure for the first few episodes. Uh. Alright, let's do this! The pilot is disorienting on purpose. Characters slither and jump about in impossible ways, and any cut might be accompanied by a complete shift in color or animation style. 
In its 30 minutes, the pilot doesn't really give you a second to breathe. Each character introduced is strange and somewhat frightening, and they're shown in a way that's meant to keep you on your toes. That's simply not the case in the full series. The unique character designs are still present, but they don't move in the bizarre ways that define the pilot. Scenes have a more traditional build, and you get to sit with individual moments for longer, rather than being quickly tossed along to something else. The new approach isn't necessarily better or worse than the original, but it will certainly be more accessible to viewers who aren't as well versed in experimental animation. In addition to all the stylistic changes, Prime Video's version of Has Been Hotel makes some narrative tweaks to the story laid out in the pilot. For the most part, the season feels like a natural continuation. When Serpentius arrives in Episode 1 to attack the hotel, we're told that it's been a week since his last assault, which occurs at the end of the pilot. Similar details are littered throughout the premiere episodes to let us know where we are in relation to the pilot, such as Alistair taking credit for the Haspin Hotel's name and the season beginning right after an extermination. However, there are also some interesting changes. One detail we get in the full show is that Charlie's mother, Lilith, the first human woman, has been missing for seven years. The pilot features a scene in which Charlie calls her mom and leaves a voicemail, showing that she's busy at the moment. But we don't get the sense that Charlie doesn't actually know where Lilith is. I know I keep calling, and uh, you must be busy. Really busy. In the has -been Hotel pilots, the aftermath of the extermination is depicted as widespread chaos. The news reports turf wars being fought by different overlords of hell, which are shown as full-on gun battles in the streets. Taking and holding power in Pentagram City seems to be a violent thing, with very little respect or diplomacy shown between the different overlords. We get a very different picture of hell politics in the full show, however. In particular, Episode 3, Scrambled Eggs, features a meeting between the leading overlords of Pentagram City, including Alistair, Velvet of the Vs, the ancient being known as Zestiel, and weapons dealer Carmilla Carmine. While there are certainly tensions here, the dealings between the overlords are much more civil than what's shown in the pilot. Violence no longer seems to be the default mode of operation, at least not when Heaven is a more active threat. Alistair's backstory of having killed off numerous other overlords in the past remains, which means that turf wars and infighting still occur. But the overlords in the full show seem to care more about preserving their respective business interests, and Zestiel and Carmilla even appear to be friends. It might not really qualify as a difference that the has -been Hotel show is a much larger ensemble of core characters than the pilot. Had Vivian Madrano continued the story on YouTube independently, the cast likely would have expanded in similar ways there. Still, it's a notable expansion of the original that's worth talking about. The opening montage of the pilot gives viewers glimpses of Carmilla and her daughters, as well as the Vs. Angel's abusive relationship with Valentino is teased via a blink and you'll miss it text message, and we get outlines of Heaven's Exorcist, but no full scenes. All of these characters and relationships are expanded in the show. The Vs are portrayed not simply as another group of overlords, but as a kind of new money faction upsetting traditional methods of control. Episode 2 of the Prime Video series shows that Vox sees himself as a direct rival to Alistair, and their TV radio dichotomy embodies this old versus new idea. Likewise, Heaven is depicted in far more detail, and we immediately get more explanation for how the Angel hierarchy functions in Episode 1. Taken together, these changes and additions create a more vibrant and complete world for the main story to move through. Where the pilot uses the Hell world building for primarily aesthetic purposes, the full show adds detail to the visual touches and imbues them with life. Part of what made the Hasbin Hotel pilot so memorable back in 2019 was the striking opening sequence that kicks it off. Through a shifting montage of dramatically different visual styles, the story of Hell is told with no exposition, narrated only by Charlie's opening musical number. It's a scene you'd need to watch several times to fully understand, and even then, some things might remain unclear. We see Lucifer's fall, the construction of the mortal world, and the oppressive relationship between Heaven and the Demon Realm, but nothing is elaborated on. A similar sequence begins Episode 1 of the full series, but it's handled in a much more traditional way. Charlie narrates the story of Hell, explaining how the angels of Heaven cast out Lucifer for his provocative ideas, how they created Adam and Lilith on Earth, and how Lucifer and Lilith fell in love, ultimately causing evil to enter the mortal world. It's also stated that Lilith built a powerful and unified realm in Hell, which is why Heaven started enacting exterminations to stop any possibility of rebellion. In the pilot, it's only said that the exterminations are meant to control the ever-expanding population of Hell. Every year, they would send down an army, an extermination, to ensure Hell and its sinners could never rise against them. 
The stylized visuals of the pilot's opening montage are still intact, though different. Overall, it's a more straightforward way to introduce the world of Hasbin Hotel to new viewers, though it's also admittedly less emotionally impactful than the striking way the pilot begins. As evidenced by the new opening narration, the full version of Hasbin Hotel focuses more directly on the relationship between heaven and hell. Rather than just the inner turmoil of hell itself, Episode 1 portrays heaven as the oppressive ruling body in this universe, justifying its perpetual violence against hell through the belief that sinners and demons deserve it. The episode also shows Adam, former first man of Earth and leader of the Angels' Exorcist unit, who's as crude as he is arrogant. Again, this all gives the full Hasbin Hotel a more traditional structure than the pilot. Establishing a clear villainous force, one that's far stronger than any of the main characters, creates a legible dynamic for the story to play in. There are evil people in hell, sure. Plenty of them, in fact. But it's the difference between street gangs and a tyrannical government. One is simply more monolithic and dangerous than the other. Heaven only becomes more villainous when Adam reveals that they're having the time between exterminations, another change from the pilot. Rather than waiting another full year for the next attack, the exorcists plan to invade hell again in just six months. As previously mentioned, Alistair is arguably the most altered character in Hasbin Hotel. That might seem like a tough judgment to make given how briefly he's in the pilot, and the version of him that we see in the full show was likely always the plan. As different as a radio demon may be aesthetically, his role in the larger narrative has arguably been changed even more. In the pilot, Alistair arrives at the hotel and offers to whip it into shape simply because he's bored. He believes Charlie's mission will be a total failure and highly entertaining. But as he repeatedly encourages her to make a devil's deal with him, it feels like his true goals are even more malicious. He isn't just an agent of chaos, but someone with a clear capacity for true evil. The Prime Video series positions him more as a renegade demon, someone who's unpredictable, but who has a code that separates him from the other overlords of hell. He supports Charlie more openly, and this implied that his absence, something explained much more clearly in the full show, might be connected to Lilith. As the show continues, it's likely that we'll get a more understandable explanation for why he went on his initial killing spree in the afterlife. Angel, you're a porn star. A famous porn star! Let's be clear, the Prime Video has been Hotel series is still plenty dirty. You will hear every obscene word, see allusions to every substance, and watch scenes set at adult film shoots. It's all in there. But at the same time, the handling of all that material feels a bit less vulgar than it does in the pilot. Some of the change in tone could be due to the holistic changes in the full show, more traditional animation, fewer intentionally unsettling visuals, and more grounded characters. It's also true that while the full series isn't shy about dropping some foul language, it does so more sparingly. The pilot often feels like it's trying to make you uncomfortable by throwing in filthy phrases when you might not expect them. That element of surprise isn't present in the full series to the same extent. Like many of the other differences between the Hasbin Hotel pilot and the official show, this feels like a minor tweak meant to expand the series for a wider audience. The beautiful thing about independent projects is that once you identify a specific audience, you can craft some things specifically for them and not worry about anything larger. Once major studios get involved, those priorities naturally shift a bit. But don't worry, Vivian Madrano and her team have successfully preserved what made the original Hasbin Hotel pilot so great, and it should be exciting to see what else they can do with a major budget and production support behind them.